Hi guys and welcome back to the channel for this third part of the review, Memory Scaling. I've tested 5 different kits of memory for a total of 24 configurations and 10 benchmarks each. So, as always, let's get straight to the point and let me show you some numbers. The G-Skill Flare X 3200MHz C14 is one of the first kits made specifically for Ryzen. To do the setup, you just need to select the profile in the BIOS. The G-Skill Trident Z 4500MHz C19 is a kit made with Samsung BDI chip and is the best kit to reach the maximum frequency the integrated memory controller of your CPU is capable of, which is around 3400MHz C14 and low timing and sub timings. The Trident Z 3600 C16 is another kit based on Samsung BDI chips. If you are lucky enough, you can match the same performance of the Flare X and the Trident Z. It's less expensive and you have to manually set it in BIOS. It does not boot with this normal profile. The HyperX Predator 3300 C15 is another kit that I'm using usually in the reviews because it's QVL certified. It can easily reach 3200MHz C14 and being an 8GB kit, it costs more or less half the price of the other kits delivering the same performance in gaming. The Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200MHz C16 can be a cheaper alternative, but keep in mind that it's not certified and most of the times I was not able to run it at its rated speed. For the test I've used a Gigabyte X470 Gaming 7 and an Asus Z370 Maximus X. Everything is updated with the lastest microcode update and Windows is updated with the lastest patches. The other components are a Seasonic Prime Gold 850 watts, a GTX 1080 at default clock speed but uh, water cooled with AK water block and a full custom loop by EK with Noctua fans. One of the best improvements AMD did with the Zen Plus architecture is the cache and memory latency. I was hoping for a better memory controller able to reach higher frequency, but at the end this improvement in the cache and memory latency is more than enough for a refresh. But we have one problem, most of the kits are optimized for the Intel platform, and to unlock the full potential of the Ryzen CPU, we need to set the timings and voltages manually in the BIOS. And to do that is not an easy task, but fortunately we have someone that made a tool that is a must have, it will save you a lot of hours of testing. And I really want to thank this guy because it saved me a lot of time and really the tool is outstanding. You can check in the description the link of the thread in the overclock.net forum to stay updated with the newer version. When you are changing your BIOS make sure you enter everything you see and you can change with the value in the tool. This is an example of my Flare X with the C14 Extreme Profile from the tool. All the configuration you are going to see in the benchmark has been tested with RAM test. Another great tool. It's not free, it costs 9.99 euro, but it's totally worth it. If your memories are not stable, with this tool you can find errors in less than 5 minutes. And if you can endure for at least 2 hours, you are sure that your system is stable rock solid almost at uh, 99%. Memory latency is a good indicator of performance. Lower values means that your CPU is receiving the information faster. So more FPS for your games and more performance for your application. The red line is the profile made with the Ryzen calculator set to extreme and for a daily configuration is the best you can hope for. The yellow line is the default profile of the Flarex and it's not that bad because it's very similar at lower clocks to the extreme profile. Uh, we have some distance at 3400 MHz but if you are looking for maximum performance and you are comfortable enough to overclock your memory with a kit of G-Skill you can reach easily the 3400 MHz extreme profile. In the productivity benchmark we see more or less a 2% from a safe profile to an extreme profile. So there's no big difference in this area, but let's analyze the results of the single test. 
Sorry guys for not being completely mobile friendly, but I did a lot of testing and I didn't find any way to put all the results in a page and visible from a mobile device. But one thing you can do is to pay attention to the colors. In purple we have the extreme profile plus the precision boost overdrive activated. In red we have the extreme profile, in green the safe profile, in yellow the extreme profile but with two kits combined, so for a total of 32 GB. In orange the Flare X at their XMP profile, in blue the i7-8700K, as I did in the previous review, the bar with the red gradient is for the 5 GHz overclocking, the yellow gradient is for the G-Skill 4500C19 and the straight blue bar is for the 8700K plus the Flare X at their default profile. Then we have the grey bar for the Corsair LPX that I was able to run only at uh, 300 MHz and the white bar, one in overclocking version 3200 MHz C14, uh, the Ryzen calculator fast profile and the other one at their XMP profile. So, in Corona benchmark is all about frequency and cores. In the App Startup benchmark is more focused by the single threaded frequency of the CPU. So in this benchmark the Intel i7 is clearly a step ahead and memory can do much about that. In photo editing we have a very interesting results. The Intel i7 is at the bottom, at the top and in the middle. What does this mean to us? This type of workload loves memory bandwidth. To achieve that, the main focus is memory frequency. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised about this result because, uh, as you may know, the rendering is, mm, is focused by core and frequency. And the Intel i7 with two core less than the Ryzen should be like in the middle. If you use this CPU for this kind of task, focus on CPU frequency and a good balance between memory frequency and timings. Once again, this type of tasks requires uh, a good IPC, so CPU frequency, and a good balance of memory frequency and timings. In gaming, we have the same curve, but the gains are much higher. From a safe profile to an extreme profile, we have roughly a 5% difference. And from a basic 2400 MHz at C16 to a 3400 MHz C14 Extreme, there's a 20% increase. So if you're a gamer, invest at least in a kit like the Flare X. One thing that I didn't mention in the test you just saw is I test as well with one stick of G-Skill Flare X at 3400 MHz C14. And despite these frequency and tight timings, going with only one stick of uh, memory is the worst thing you can ever do. Far Cry 5 is the perfect example of how the memory timings and sub timings can help a CPU having better results. Deus Ex is similar, low timings provide better performance. Look at the one stick of the Flare X, it's losing more than 25%. This case is also interesting, memory doesn't really matter too much. CPU frequency and IPC is the bottleneck. Last but not least, World of Warcraft. This is the perfect example of single threaded old game engine. Needless to say, CPU frequency is the key, but memory as well needs to keep up. So again, a good balance of memory frequency and timings. I spent the past 10 days testing memories. Testing 24 different configurations takes a tremendous amount of time and using kit with compatibility issue is a real pain in the ass. So, what I've learned from this fantastic experience? The Flare X is the perfect kit for almost everybody. You have an XMP profile that works great. You can do extreme overclocking if you like because the BDI chips they use is selected is very good. The only cons is the price, that is not the cheapest option, but uh, neither is the, the most expensive one. And if time is a value for you, this is the way to go, full stop. If you're looking for top performance or extreme overclocking, the G-Skill Trident Z4500C19 
is a slightly better option. I was able to run this kit at C12 timings, so it's very very good, but as well is a very expensive kit. The Trident Z 3600C16 is a good kit, uh, good performance, good overclocking, be die. Uh, the cons is that it has to be set manually and the price is let's say the same of the Flare X, but without the XMP profile. The HyperX Predator as well is a very nice kit. Uh, in gaming, the performance is identical or similar to the 16GB kit, but the cost is uh, half. If you're tight on budget, this is a very good option, at least temporary. Let's say the price of the memory is dropping and you can buy a second kit and reach 16GB. And then we have the Corsair Vengeance. Uh, this is a great kit for Intel and lucky thing that I purchased this kit like 3 years ago or it cost me like 80 euros, it's okay. Uh, but honestly with Ryzen, no way. This is the only kit I was unable to set with Ryzen calculator. I literally spent hours trying with voltages to find a setting that was stable. If you are looking for a cheap option, just do yourself a favor go in your motherboard support page, seek for the QVL certify list and pick a kit from that list. You're going to save you a lot of time and trouble. I hope you enjoyed this review. As always, let me know in the comment section what you think about it or what you would like to see. And I'm not done yet with the CPU, so I have a lot of things to do like extreme overclocking, a VRM testing in various boards with a thermal image video camera scanner and uh, many more. So stay tuned, subscribe and see you in the next video.